right next up, taking a peek at the media screen for the Forte. So Forte does technically have two different media screens that are available. It's either going to be an 8 inch or this 10.25 inch media screen. So you're going to have very similar functionality between the two with a few caveats. So in this one, we do have factory navigation versus in the smaller screen, we won't. The other thing is that in this screen, it's going to be wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but in the smaller screen, it's wireless. So unfortunately, no wireless solution inside of this 10.25 inch screen as of right now, like fingers crossed, hopefully that comes soon. But let's dive through the media screen. I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know about what's going on because there are actually quite a few things that are available. We're gonna start off just on the generic home page here. So we've got our home page. We could, if we want to, swipe across and we've got a whole series of different options that are available or we can swipe back to the screen instead. So first thing along the very top, this is going to pull up our user profiles. Very useful if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle. So we can set up different drivers very easily. We can change the name profile. We can link our Kia Connect on our cell phone or we can also delete the profile if we want to. Moving back out, we've got our home icon, which brings us back home. We've got this button, which does three things. So we can turn the display off, we can turn it on, button press here to edit the home icons. So if you wanna edit the screen out, we've got that flexibility. So if you use the radio a little bit more, we just press and hold, and we can adjust this however we want to, which I think is fantastic. If you've kind of started playing around with it a little bit too much, and you're like, what did I do? We just hit reset brings this whole screen back to the factory default instead, like just the layout itself. But it is really neat that we've got the flexibility to be able to adjust these things. Back out, other one is going to be our QR code in order to access the owner's manual. So all we're gonna do, press there. On our phone, we're just gonna pull up our camera, scanning the QR code, and then we can just button press there in order to be able to open up our digital owner's manual instead. We still do have the printed one, it's just in the glove box, but if you wanna look at it online, you do have that flexibility, which is nice. Now, other things to point out, we've got our time along the top, current date, and then active data connections, yes, oh, yes or no. One cool thing, if we wanna change the date time, we just press, and then it launches us into this setting instead. We can adjust our daylight savings time, change it out to that military time, so the 24 hour mode instead, if you wanted to go that route. But let's dive through all of the different settings here. Starting off with our map, we've got our main map there. One cool thing is that we can go split screen if we want to, so we can look at our factory navigation as we go up between all of our different presets and things like that. So that is a really useful feature to have. If you don't like it, we can just go full screen and just take advantage of this whole screen, which looks really, really nice. All right, now, a bunch of other things here. We've got our current heading there, so we can kind of adjust out however we want it to look. We've got a few different options there. We can, kill off. Will be at this <laughs> we can kill off our navigation volume if we want to. Navigation priority means that if we're coming to an upcoming turn, it's going to lower our regular audio so that we can hear what's going on. And then we can also increase or decrease that way if we want to. We can also just very easily do a pinch to zoom. And as you can see there, fairly responsive. We also have the auto mode, so it's automatically going to adjust in and out as necessary for us, which is great. From there, we've got a few other things. So we've got our menu button. We've got an active route, which as of right now is nothing's going. We've got some nearby point of interest icons, categories, we can save, we can show traffic information, we can turn the display off. So a few different things, and that's gonna be a recurring theme, like we saw display off in a few other spots. You'll be able to find some different settings in different parts as we go through. But let's search for an address. I did look for a Tim Hortons earlier, so we're just gonna press there. And as you can see, we've got two different routes that are available. So we could hit recommended versus alternative if we want to, and it's going to let us know how long in the distance in order to get there. We can start guidance, add a waypoint, and look at route avoidance options as well. That's useful because we can kind of stop, a, we can put a waypoint in between. So if you know you have to maybe stop at the bank before you go to Tim Hortons, you'd have that flexibility. So it's really useful if you're planning a longer trip. We can avoid certain things. So if we want to avoid ferries, toll roads, car lanes, things like that, we would have the flexibility to be able to do it. And then once we do any changes there, we just recalculate and then it'll recalculate as necessary. We just hit the start guidance. guidance. will start now. Perfect, and there we go. And we've got our total destination there. So you can see what's going on. When I drag and drop this way, it does give me the flexibility to add in a waypoint. We can add in a new destination if we want to that way, or just press map in order to jump back to that main map instead. We can zoom in and out as necessary. If we go there now, we've got some other options. So 
along the very top, we've got some reroute options, or we've got some root options again. So we can see those two routes that we've got. We can just restart. Will start now. We can press menu again in order to go to root, nearby interest icons, things like that. We can cancel the route, and then we can also press there in order to either get our arrival time or our remaining time. So what time are we gonna get there, which is in two minutes, or we can look at that route instead. So we've got a few different ways that we can go about it, or just cancel route. And as you can see, route's canceled, and it's that simple. Now, we do have the flexibility, so either through this main screen to press either map or navigation. We can also press either map or navigation along the very bottom there as well, which brings us to the same screens. So let's move into our navigation next. We can search for addresses, we can look at point of interest icons, whether that's gas stations, parking, whatever the case may be. We do have the flexibility of pressing the voice command prompt in order to be able to look at routes and things like that. So if we look at Here active commands, commands, we can say screen, find addresses, go home, previous destinations, and things like that. So it's a very useful setting there. Rather than having to fiddle with the screen, we can just use our voice instead. Next up, previous destinations. Where have we gone to previously? What places have we visited frequently? So we've got some different options there. We can look at Kia dealerships, cancel the route, look at overviews, route options, and things like that. Or we can look at live traffic. We do have the flexibility of plugging in different addresses. So work address, home address, really useful because we could then press the voice command prompt and say, navigate home, navigate to work, whatever the case may be. And it's automatically gonna pull out that address for us. So it's a really, really useful setting. So if you go to multiple destinations all the time, just recommend setting that one up because it's a huge time saver, which is amazing. Moving back home, we've got our phone now. And phone, very straightforward. So we're actually gonna start off on the iPhone side of things. So showing you how to set one of these things up, we're just gonna hit phone. Turn Bluetooth on from your device in order to search. Okay. On your device, select the name that matches vehicle name and on the screen. We're looking for Kia. We can change that name. I'll show you how it's done later. But you can see there, we've got the passcode on this right. Okay, do we wanna allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm gonna hit don't allow for now, but you can see there we've got that. We've got my dial pad, we've got my phone name. We've got what's currently going on with our battery yeah, as well as, unsuccessful. yeah. So Please the reason why I said that status. is because I said no. Like to try again? No. For so we do have the flexibility if we want to, we can. Let's say if you accidentally hit no, but you wanted to download your contacts, you could delete your phone, add it again, hit yes in order to be able to add it. So it's really straightforward. And same idea, we can go split screen if we wanted to based off of our phone screen there. But I did mention, so we've got our current signal strength and our battery there on top of that. So really straightforward. If we go back to setup now, we've got a few other options. So we've got all of our navigation settings, but the big one is device connections. So device connections, we've got the iPhone that I just set up. If you wanted to, you could have it so that it's strictly for music or you can have it for your phone. So all you do is select one or the other. So we can deselect that and all of a sudden the phone is just gonna be used for music instead. We can add in more devices or we can delete that way if we want. Bluetooth prompts, do we wanna play prompts or do we wanna mute them as they come through? We've got our Bluetooth system info and this is where we go to update our car, our car name. So we can change it out if we don't want it to be Kia. We can add in our passcode to change it from the very difficult 0000. So definitely recommend changing that to something more challenging. Projection settings are gonna be for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I'm curious if they fix the Android Auto bug because even if we don't have split screen selected, Android Auto always defaulted to split screen. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna come back after I set up CarPlay to show you what this looks like. But that's how you set up a phone, an iPhone specifically inside of the Forte. But let's actually go through and I'm gonna show you how you can set up Apple CarPlay inside of this thing. So all we're gonna do, take our USB cable and there are about a few different USB ports down below. We're just gonna plug it into the middle one. Opposite end of the cable, we're just plugging ourselves in. And so as you can see there, reading USB, do we wanna use CarPlay? Do we wanna allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes. So a few seconds in and we are connected. Boom, and look at that, all across this beautiful media screen. Looks really, really sharp. We've got our home screen there. We've got whatever podcast we're listening to. We can search the phone. We can jump into whatever map application was open last. So if we want to, we can jump into Apple Maps and that brings our default there to Apple Maps instead. So if we press home, we can scroll across, go into Waze, go into Google Maps, press home there, and it's going to default into our Google Maps instead. So you've got a few different options that are available. 
I did mention we can do a long press and hold on the steering wheel if we wanted to activate our Siri Assistant as well, which is fantastic. Or we can just do a press and hold on our phone, which also launches it up through the media screen. Scrolling across, we've got our phone, music, maps. But as you saw there, we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze that can all be used through Apple CarPlay, which is amazing. Live One is a radio app. We've got, let's see, audiobooks, we've got podcasts, and so many other things. But these things are all really straightforward to go through, listen to. We can look at your library back home. We can look at our calendar and things like that. So there are a ton of options that are available looking at CarPlay. One cool thing is that we can jump into our general settings. If we go to CarPlay, we can then select the vehicle we can disallow CarPlay. So if we want to, we can turn it off. If you've connected your phone and you're noticing that CarPlay is not working, check there to see if it's actively connected. If it is, delete the phone from the car, from the vehicle, and then add it again. So we just forget, we add our phone back in, and it should automatically connect. But we can customize. So on the home screen, let's say if you love listening to podcasts and you are a fan of Waze, oh, uh, press and hold, drag it to the top and as you saw there just hot dynamic presses and it just it updates it for us which is amazing if you accidentally delete something it shows up at the bottom of the screen here but it removes it from apple carplay if you've done too much you just reset brings it right back to the factory default layout instead so really really straightforward i did promise you one thing so if you go back to setup device connections phone projection we can't do anything until we disconnect but phone projection, CarPlay, use split screen, and we're going to go home, plug back in, and watch this. We're going to go into CarPlay, and then as you can see here, we do have our split screen. We can go up and down now between subscreens if we want to. Now, we could adjust this way if we want to, so AM, FM, Series, XM, etc. We could also adjust this way. So it looks like that little bug is fixed where it didn't actually let you launch into any of these options, but it is interesting because we need to, as you can see there, have an active source in one of our presets. But once we've done that, we can then rotate this way in order to be able to listen to the radio while we're also connected to CarPlay. So we've got Google Maps while we've got CarPlay going. All of this, or sorry, we've got CarPlay going with Google Maps while we've also got our radio playing. So that's how you get that done. So very, very straightforward to do. But I mean, look at that, really nice. If we wanted to get that full screen back, we just go back into setup, device connections, unplug, CarPlay, full screen instead, and you're set to go. But I mean, you saw it there, really, really straightforward to be able to add a phone to this vehicle. Hey, next up, setting up an Android is the exact same process. So if you weren't on this screen, all we have to do is just get back into device connections again. So we just go setup, device connections, device connections here. We can add in a new phone or delete that other one. I'm going to keep this one connected to show you something neat. So, key is there. Do we want to pair up? Pins match. There we go. So we are now connected there, but as you can see, we've got one, so we've just connected this device, but at the same time, it's showing the iPhone gets connection priority. So what we're gonna do, just press, drag it, and then if we want to, we could connect up to this one instead. It's disconnecting, and it's connecting now to this phone in order to be able to make phone calls. But as you can see, we still have the iPhone that has that priority connection in order to be able to listen to music. So this is really cool because you can have- Okay, so this is cool because we've got one phone we're connected to, uh, let's say, for our phone, and then we can disable this if we want to. So we've got one phone for audio, one phone for the phone instead in order to make calls. So it's really cool that we've got that available as an option. If we wanted to delete a device, we just select, delete, yes. I mean, three seconds there and it's deleted. So it's really straightforward. But I mean, if we want to, we can just go back home, jump back into our phone, keypad messages and things like that so very straightforward and then very similar to the iphone side of things we also have the flexibility of setting up android auto in this screen it is a wired connection so we take our usb cable plug it in down below opposite end of the cable we're just plugging ourselves in and i'm gonna have to unlock so unlock to continue okay next All right, it's just taking its sweet time connecting. 
There we go. Allow access to messages, etc. So there we go. And three, two, one, we are fully connected. Now, I don't know if you remember, but I did have full screen Android Auto enabled, but it's still doing a split screen. So it looks like we still don't have the full screen matte capabilities in Android Auto as of right now. It is useful because we are using, I mean, we've got our podcast kind of split this way, but I really wish we could utilize the whole screen in order to stretch the maps across. So it's like, fingers crossed, but I mean, as of right now, this is as good as the split screen is going to get, unfortunately. But as you can see there, we've got Google Maps. We've got this as part of what's going on with our podcast there. We can press the Google Maps side of things if we want to, go for look at traffic, satellite, if we want to look at different route options and things like that as well. So we've got that as an option. We can X out. And then we've got a series of different buttons along the side here. So we could press this if we want to activate our Google Assistant. We can also press and hold on the steering wheel. So long press to activate that way. We've got any available notifications. We've got what's currently going on for media suggestions. We could also listen to our podcast this way, and then it just split screens to jump Google Maps over to the other side. Or we could push this button along the very top left to get back to the main screen. Now one thing, this phone has Waze installed, and it looks like we don't have Waze available as an option here, unfortunately. So I'm like, fingers crossed, hopefully that also gets fixed here, but we've at least got Google Maps. And then depending on the version of the vehicle you're in, we also do have the fle flexibility of looking at factory navigation instead. So, I mean, we've got quite a few different options available there. But, I mean, it is nice. We can easily adjust what's going on with our podcast, look at settings, go to our maps. We can easily make phone calls and things like that through that screen. So, whether you decide to use Android Auto, Apple CarPlay or not, matter of preference. I personally love using Google Maps in Waze, so that would typically be my go-to anyways. But that's how we set up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay inside the vehicle. All right, so we've got our phone projection. But if we go into oh, our setup... Device connections, phone projection. I did tell you, so it did have full uh, full screen enabled, but for whatever reason, it's just not letting us go true full screen. So we're very close to it. Unfortunately, not there as of yet, but I mean, as you saw there, it's easy enough to connect, setting up our phones and things like that. We can go back home. We can look at our phone projection, which that's the Android Auto, Auto Apple CarPlay. It's grayed out because there's nothing connected. We can jump into our setup, device connections, delete that. Delete, yes, and three, two, one, we're deleted. So it's that easy setting up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and connecting a phone inside of the Forte. All right, from here, let's jump back to the home screen and a ton of other options. So we've already seen our phone and phone projection. We do have voice memos. So if you want to, you can record a memo right onto the car. And we've got our climate control settings, so we can see what our current settings are. We don't have the flexibility of adjusting anything directly through the screen, unfortunately, but as we adjust, so we go through one way versus the other. It does give us that flexibility. We can sync up back to our driver's side. We can also see what's going on as we adjust our fan speed, whether we have AC going, yes, no, etc. So we've at least got a few options there. We can recirculate when we use our windshield wiper fluid. We can auto dehumidify and then also have it auto defog for us too, which is kind of nice. We've got valet mode, which we do need a few things. So we do need to have our Blue Link system set up in order for valet mode to work. And I mean, obviously it's not going to be set up because I'm in a dealership vehicle right now. So valet mode, it's just a matter of downloading the Kia Connect app, and then you can connect that way in order to lock things out. So valet can't look through all of your different settings. Quiet mode is going to essentially quiet everything down. So if you've got sleeping kids, it essentially makes sure that we don't go past a certain volume. We've got our HD radio, so we can see what's going on with our traffic, radar, fuel prices. We've got our radio here, which again, we can either get through there, or we can press the radio button there in order to get to what's going on with our radio. Jump between AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. We can also kind of do a drag and drop here if we want to. We can also add in another station. We can see what's going on with our current station list. So if you're new to an area, not sure what you can listen to, really useful to go here. And then we can look through all of the available stations. And then you're just going to select whatever stations you want. So let's go through and add a few in. So two good stations, 94.9, We can go through Sirius XM and then look through our presets as well. So we just added two of them in, but it is really straightforward. We can easily reorder by doing a drag and drop. We can also delete presets as well. So we just select whatever ones we want to delete. Delete. Yes. And it's to remove the preset. So it is really nice. We've got that available as an option. 
moving back, we do have a ton of other things to look at as well. So if we press the button along the top, we can scan Sirius XM channels, we can delete presets, reorder, and things like that as well. We can jump between different songs that way. We could also enter a channel this way. So if we wanted to listen to a channel instead, we could go that route. So tons of different options that are available, but it is so straightforward to use all at the same time there. Next up, our media. So we've got our FM, AM, Sirius XM, Sounds of Nature. We've got Bluetooth audio. So if we were hooked up to either, you know, an Android, iPhone, a USB stick, things like that, we would have the flexibility of jumping between all of these other sources. It is nice that we've got so many options available here though. Moving into our setup next, ton of other options. We've got our vehicle settings, driver assistance. It is neat. So it tells us essentially everything that the car can do. So we've got, oh, that's actually really cool. I never even noticed that before that we could push everything here. So we could look at more drivers, convenience settings, forward safety settings. That's really neat. I honestly, I didn't even know that we could jump in and do all of these unique things. That's really cool. So let's drive through. I'm going to show you everything you need to know here. Driving convenience, so we've got our highway drive assist. Big one is gonna be the highway speed change. So if the vehicle recognizes that there's something going on at the speed, navigation data is automatically gonna lower the speed for you. We've got, ooh, one that we missed. We've got our smart cruise control, what's going on there. So essentially looking at the leading car in front of us, do we want it to have a fast, normal, or a slower reaction? We've got our warning timers. So do we wanna have a late or a generic, or a quicker timer? Our warning and haptic sounds so really useful to have the setting turned on unless you're going onto the track but priorities for safety for parking so what's going to happen is if we've got our parking assist so a view so if we're backing up and then there's a potential collision behind us it's going to essentially blast the sound to let us know of a potential collision priority means that it's going to lower our regular audio in order to be able to let us know of something going on behind us driver attention warning this one is kind of neat because if you're stopped and let's say you're not paying attention, lose focus for a second and the car in front of you takes off, it's going to automatically let you know that you should probably start driving. And then in a tent of warning, if we start to veer over too many times, it's going to tell us that we should probably take a break. We've got forward safety. So if the vehicle recognizes a potential collision, it's going to automatically brake. It can give us a warning or it can do nothing. Lane safety, so with the same thing, if we start to veer over without signaling, it's gonna gently nudge us back into our lane. It's going to give us a warning or it'll do nothing. Blind spot safety, so we've got our safe exit warning. So if it recognizes there's a vehicle in the blind spot of the vehicle, it's going to let us know we've got a warning or nothing will happen. We've got our park safety, so we've got our rear cross traffic alert. So as we go to back up, if it recognizes that there's a vehicle behind us, it's automatically going to let us know. So if somebody's coming from the left or the right side, it's gonna say, hey, potential collision going on. And then we can also adjust what's going on with some different settings here. So we've got our rear view parking lines. So as we're in reverse, do we want these parking lines showing up? Yes or no. And then we've also got our extended rear view on top of that. So even after we shift to drive, it'll keep the backup camera on for a second. We've got all of our different camera settings. So if we want to adjust the brightness for nighttime, for daytime, adjust the contrast and things like that, we've got that flexibility. Moving back from there, that's all for driver assistance. We've got some options for our cluster now. So we can adjust the illumination. If we want to adjust the brightness, we can adjust the blue light filter. We can use a blue light as well. Really useful for later on at night. So we're gonna go more warm and we want it automatically happening. So useful to get rid of eye strain at night we can have it automatically come on or schedule when we want it to happen. Or we can just have nothing happen. Some options for camera settings. Do we wanna show our extended rear view? We've got our display settings there as well. And I did mention, so a lot of these things, you're gonna see them repeated a few different spaces. We've got our service interval. So are we coming up for service, whether that's for different, different distance, days, we can reset. We've got our content selection. So what do we want showing in our cluster? Do we want the wiper lights, traffic signals, icy road warnings? Do we want welcome sounds playing when we turn the car on or off as well? Moving back, we've also got climate settings so we can recirculate, auto ventilate. And again, we saw that we can have, we can schedule the ventilation and then for our defog, defrost, etc. Different options for lights, so our turn signal. So when we go to turn, you can hear that it's three there. We can have it at one flash, three flashes, five or seven. We can have a welcome light showing on the outside there as we approach at night. 
we can have our headlight delay. So as we go to lock the vehicle, do we want our headlights to stay on? And then we've got our high beam assist. So really useful because if the vehicle recognizes that there's somebody oncoming, it's going to automatically dim the high beams for you so you're not blinding people in front of you. So really, really useful setting there. Some different options for the door. Do we want to have the vehicle lock the doors when we go to shift or when we start driving away? Do we want to have them unlock when we park the vehicle, when we turn the vehicle off, or do we never just want the doors to automatically unlock? To press unlock on the door, our smart trunk is really useful. So with smart trunk, if we've got our key fob on us, we walk away for a few seconds, the, the trunk is automatically going to open. Let's hop outside and I'll show you how that process works. Now, once we do have the setting enabled in that media screen, all we have to do is make sure the vehicle's locked and it has to be locked for at least 10 to 15 seconds or so and you need to be about 10 to 15 meters away. So, vehicle's locked, I'm just gonna go for a quick walk. Right, and after you've waited that 10 to 15 seconds or so, you've gone shopping, you've got your groceries, you're just gonna walk up to the back end of the vehicle here and hear beeping. <laughs> so it's very straightforward to use. I mean, I don't have the key fob on me in my, oh, I've got it in my back pocket, but it is really nice. Like, yeah, we've got our trunk release down here. We've got the release on the inside, but having the flexibility to use these smart lift gates so that you don't even need to worry about pulling the fob out of your pocket, I think is absolutely brilliant. I love that the Forte has that available as an option. So that is really cool. We've also got the flexibility of using our key fob in order to control the windows so we can roll the windows down. So let me show you how that process works. What we're gonna do here, on the actual fob itself, we can see that we've got a series of different buttons that are available on the front end there. So let me just kind of focus you in. We've got our lock button, unlock button, etc. We're just gonna press the unlock button twice, but on the second button press, we're gonna hold. Now one thing, if we release the unlock button, it's gonna stop it. So watch what happens here. We're gonna go one, two, and hold. We can release, it stops. We press again. Back down it goes. So that's for the driver's side window. So again, really, really cool setting. We've got that as an option. And we've got our convenient settings from there. Rear occupant alert. When we go to drive, we turn the vehicle off. It's going to tell us in our cluster screen that you should probably take a look at the back seats. Now we can also disable our wireless charger if we want to. From there, we've got a series of different navigation settings, and we've seen some of these ones, but we can see what's going on with our vehicle speed in the cluster. We've got our traffic info, traffic colors. Do we want to show different point of interest icons in the cluster, or in the media screen, I should say. For guidance, do we want to have what type of guidance? Detailed, do we want to show speed limits? Do we want to have our interval distance or cumulative distance? So you can see there, it's how much do we have left versus how far have we gone. Moving back from here, we've also got navigation voice at the end of the destination, border crossing. Do we want to show our route overview? Oh, do we want to show our route overview when we're stopped? And then we've also got our previous destinations. So we can save them or if we have this deselected, our previous, previous destinations are just automatically going to delete, which is great some different options for maps. So we can adjust either 3D, so if we wanna go 2D, 2D head up, etc., We can have it auto scale, which means it's automatically gonna zoom in and out, just depending on how close we are to our destination. And we've got different map modes. So whether we wanna change out the font size to a larger or a smaller font, we can change out the color of the map as well, which is kinda of neat. So let's say if we went black, map, we've got a dark setting there instead. So it is kind of cool that we've got that available as an option. And from here, so we go back to our map, we've got different colors that are available there. We've got our symbol color, so whatever color we want to, we can kind of adjust it out. We've also got our map auto scale. So when we're at different speeds, how far out is the map gonna be zoomed in or out? So we've got the flexibility of adjusting this out if we want to for each individual setting. Moving back, we've got our navigation features. We can auto reset of the map automatically. Do we want to return to the map automatically if we go off screen? Showing user data. So if we've got a Kia vehicle we've had before, we can import all of our data as necessary. And we've got our current GPS location. So if you're lost, you need to call CAA, AAA, whatever the case may be, you can just give them your GPS location that way if you want to. 
and that's the base of our navigation settings. Moving into our sound now, so we've got a few different options there. Our speed dependent volume, what's going to happen is it's going to automatically adjust the volume if we're going faster or slower. Position is going to be, so do we want to have it focusing on us, everybody, etc. So you've got that option. Our tone, do we want to change out our treble, mid-range, or bass, something like that is going to give you a pretty good sound. We've got our guidance volumes as well, so you can adjust literally everything. How loud do you want the beep to be? Do you want to turn the beep off completely? Do we want to have alerts going, navigation, things like that? Like, so many different options. I love that we can customize all of these small things. We've got our navigation voice guidance as well. Do we want to, and again, we've seen this one before, do we want think different things showing up? We've got our navigation alerts and a few other things. Radio noise, do we want to have the vehicle automatically reduce the noise for us? And then series of driver assistance settings, which again, we've already seen some of those ones. We've already seen device connections, user profiles we've already seen, voice recognition, we've got a few different settings there. So we've got reduce the number of prompts, which essentially is more or less like an advanced mode. So if we press the voice command prompt in the steering wheel, we just won't get as many prompts if we've got this one enabled. From there, we've got our screen layout, which we've got a few different options. So if you wanted to have different themes for our screen, we've got that flexibility. We've got our screen saver. So when we turn the display off, do we want to have nothing? And then from there, so do we want a digital clock? So we turn the display off and it shows a digital clock, or do we want an analog clock with a different watch face? So we've got that available as an option. Turn the display off and you can see there. So you've got a few different options what's showing up. And then split screen, so when we are in our split screen mode, what's going to show up? Do we want to have our weather showing up, compass, etc.? And which order do we want them showing up in? So it's kind of neat that we've got, we've got that available as an option. And from there, we've got our display, which we've already seen that, so illumination. Do we want our blue light filter or our camera settings adjusted? Do we want to adjust different buttons? And we've got a few different buttons that we can use. So when we press the custom button, so custom button right here, what do we want that one to do? Do we want it to connect to our phone, phone projection, look at our HD radio, etc.? We've got two different buttons on the steering wheel and same idea, when we press it, what do we want to have happen? So we can adjust what goes on there. Our mode button on the steering wheel, do we want it changing between all of our active sources? So it's a matter of preference, what's happening with these buttons. Do we want it changing presets, stations, frequency, etc. when we press up and down on our steering wheel button too. So we've got so many options available there. We've got our Kia Connect, which I have to feature and roll, which I can't do because this is an unsold unit. We've got our software info and update so we can see what software version we're on. We can, we can automatically update there if we want to. We've got our system information so we can see what's going on with our current vehicle storage our user manual, what's new, modem information. We've already seen what's going on with our date and time, so we can easily adjust out our day and time if we want to. We can change out our language to either English, French, Spanish, or Korean. And we've got our keyboard, so whether we want QWERTY or whether we want default keyboards, units, do we want to have kilometers, Celsius or Fahrenheit, kilometers, liters, liters per hundred, etc. Our media options, do we want to have the radio off when we start the vehicle up? Do we want to continue to play the media while the vehicle's turned off? And then do we want to have any sort of change notifications when we change out our media? Then we can also reset everything. So we can reset the driver profile if we want to, so delete driver profile one, or we can reset everything and bring the vehicle right back to the factory default. From there, a few more things. Kia Connect, which again, we do need to have the Kia app on our phone and we just need to activate there to be able to do things like remote start, etc. We've got our notifications. And we've also got our user manual there as well. So I know there are quite a few things that are available here, tons of different options, but I gotta show you this one. Sounds in nature. If you wanna just relax. So if you're a bigger fan of like ambient noises as you go, we've got the flexibility to kind of be able to adjust this kind of on the fly, which is really, really cool. So we've got all of our ambient noises, we've got all of our presets there, AM, FM, Sirius XM, but lots of information. That's everything you need to know about the media screen inside of the Kia Forte. Well, folks, that was a look at how to use the media screen inside of the Kia Forte. What did you think? Pretty straightforward to use, but if you have any questions, ran into any problems, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. But if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, share it with your social networks, and until I see you next time, take care.